Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 23 and in this tutorial I want to speak to you guys about objects, properties and methods. Okay, so you guys probably don't know this and that's because I never told you but JavaScript is an object-based programming language. Now what that means is that everything in JavaScript is an object. Now what the heck do I mean by everything in JavaScript is an object? Well you can think of an object in JavaScript a lot like an object in real life. So let's take this car for example, okay? Now this car is an object and what makes this car an object is be, uh, that it has certain physical properties that belong to this object, okay? So in other words, this whole thing is a car, but its name, or it has a name, which is a property, and that name would then be Lamborghini Aventador. Then it also has a color, so a color is another property about this car, and the color would then be red or kind of like reddish orange so those are just properties that kind of make up the object okay so that's what a property is it's just a value or something that makes up part of the object okay then we've also got this thing here called methods now a method in other words is an action okay it's an action that we can perform with our object. So in other words this car has a few actions that we can perform with it. We can uh, start the car, we can get in and take it for a drive and then when we're finished we can stop the car which would be another action or we can park the car that would be an action. So in JavaScript every time you perform an action with an object that's called a method. I'm not sure why they named it that, but hey, okay. Uh, I didn't make the rules. Just go ahead and uh, make sure that, that, that you call that action a method, okay? So let's take a look at an example real quick because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are probably not quite with me just yet. So let's make a variable real quick and we'll call that uh, variable x. Okay, so the name is not important. You can name it whatever you want. And I'm going to set that equal to a string. Now you can type whatever you want in here, but I'm just going to say my name is Quinton. Okay. And now, believe it or not, guys, this variable that I made, variable x, is actually an object. And as an object, it contains a property that I can access. So because it's a string, there is a property called length, okay? And what length does is it counts how long my string is. So in other words, it's going to, every time I add a character into the string, it's going to count that as one, okay? So in other words, this M would be one, that Y would be two, that space would be three and it's just going to carry on counting so as uh, the longer I make my string the higher this length property or the higher the value that this length property is going to contain okay so the way we access this length property is we first type the object name in this case it's X and then we put in a full stop or a period and then we type in our property name. So in this case the property is length. Okay. So whenever working with properties just remember it's the object name dot and then property name. Okay. That's how we work with properties. But this on its own doesn't make much sense. I can't just tell the computer x dot length. It's not going to know what to do with that property. So I could go ahead and store it in another variable 
or I could just go ahead and write it out on the screen. So let's do that. Document dot write and then we'll write out our property which is x dot length. Okay. And this is probably going to print out um, what's that? Two, three and uh, another four. That's seven. Okay. It's probably going to print out about 18 characters. So let's save that. Okay, I already did that. Okay, so I'm going to run this in Firefox. And as you can see, I've got the number 18 printed out on my screen. Now, the reason why that happened was because this length property is what we printed out. Okay, and like I said, what this length property does is it counts how many characters are inside of my string. So it'll include the spaces and uh, basically anything that's in here. So if I make this a little bit longer, if I say my name is Quentin and I am 21, then that number over here should go up. So let's go ahead and click refresh and you can see there's now 31 characters inside of my string. So that's an example of how we can access a property in JavaScript. And we're probably going to be doing this quite a lot over the next couple tutorials. So if you don't understand this yet, then uh, just carry on with the rest of the tutorials. And after a bit of practice, it's going to start making a lot more sense. Okay. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was methods. So let's take a look at an example of a method real quick. Okay. I just want to clear this line out here for now. That was our property. We don't have to worry about that. Now what I want to do is I want to work with a method. And what a method is, like I said, is an action that we can perform with our object. So the way we work with methods in JavaScript is we'll type in our object name. So in this case, my object name is X. And then we'll obviously append on our method name. So the method I want to work with here is to upper case. And what that does is it'll convert everything in this X variable to capital letters. And I'm forgetting something very important about this. And that is these two parentheses. Okay. That is basically how you tell the difference between a property and a method. A method will always have these two parentheses. And sometimes you'll have to put a value in here. Other times you won't really need to. Uh, like in this case, we don't have to do anything with this method. We don't have to put anything in these parentheses. But now what we can do is, like I said, this is kind of useless to JavaScript by itself. We still have to either put this in a variable or print it out. So let's make another variable and I'll call it capitals. And I'll set that equal to X to uppercase. Okay. Now what that means is that everything in this string variable here is going to become an uppercase letter, even if I didn't type it as an uppercase letter. So as you can see this Y and the word name and the word is and the rest of my name, Quinton, and all of these letters here, they're all small letters. But if I go ahead and I print out document.write, uh, okay, if I print out capitals, which is my variable, so I'm going to print out this variable right here. I save this, go back to Firefox, click refresh. Okay, you can see that it's printed everything as a capital letter. Even though I stored it as lower letters. So the reason why that happened was because we used this method, which converts all of these letters to uppercase. Okay, so we're running a little bit short on time here, but there was still something I wanted to ask you guys. 
and that is can you guys see a similarity between this statement over here and this statement over here I'll give you a hint okay I'll take the word capitals out there and I'll put these both right next to each other all the clever people should spot this now uh, I'll give you five seconds to try and figure it out so one two three four five okay so if you guys don't know what I was trying to hint at here then kind of take a closer look you see how we've got our object name and then our method name okay over here with a full stop in the middle okay that's the exact same thing we have here with our document so we've got our document object and then we've separated that uh, with the dot separator or full stop and then we've added in this method here which has an action that writes things to the document so not only is my variable x over here um, an object so is our document and our document in JavaScript is this white window over here so if you look at our browser our document would be everything that starts from this corner here down to here this is our document this white section okay and not only is our document an object this entire window of the browser that is also an object and there are tons of other objects in JavaScript as well but we'll be talking about all of those in the next couple tutorials so get keen and stay tuned so if you guys found this video helpful then don't forget to click that like button and don't forget to leave a comment and definitely guys don't forget to subscribe and as always thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time